Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome to God the News Network where the saints the are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By tuning into the Holy Spirit and tuning into God News Network every week, weekend, Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks for joining us one more time. I have with me my good friend Albert from South Carolina, who was doing an absolutely excellent job this morning on Saints Without Walls. How are you doing, brother? Oh, thanks, Rick. Thanks for that, too. <laughs> yeah, Rick, I tell you, understanding uh, the grace of God is, is great. It's great. You feel so good about it. Oh, yep, yep. It was Amen. good this morning. It was good this morning. The message was, was on In Christ. If you want to hear it, you can go to saintswithoutwalls.com and click on Archived Services. It'll be the one at the top once you get onto that page. And also tune in with us each and every weekend on Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. The way you tune in to our live service is just go to saintswithoutwalls.com and click on the join by video. And then if you're in the United States, you click join. If, if you're in the U.S., click there to join. If you're international, it'll be on the right-hand side of the page. Thank you one more time for all of you who are continually tuning in each and every week and telling your friends about us as the show just continues to grow and expand around the world due to God himself is ordained this. And we give him glory and honor and praise in everything we do. And today, we're going to get into a very complex subject. It's called, which level are you of maturity? So basically, what we're going to do is kind of dive in what the mature levels are. One of the most misunderstood books of the Bible is 1 John. If you listen to an older episode, you'll realize that Albert and I broke that down very clearly into uh, a complete detailed study, uh, but there's still some confusion on some things that, and God has revealed to me, children was very, very weakly translated, just like the word love um, from Greek. The word love from Greek has four different translations, but we know children has multiple translations as well, and we just called them children instead of, we have the infants, technion, we have the um, technon, which is the sons, and then we have another version of uh, children that deals with the young boys and young girls. And then, of course, we have the fathers. So it's kind of interesting how this breaks down in First John. But we're going to kind of dive into this today. And, uh, Rick, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, the more you dive into a book, you think that the first time you go through a book and you understand everything. But then you go a <laughs> second time and you start seeing more things. And it's like peeling and peeling pages and you start getting deeper and deeper into the book. You know, yeah. uh, let me uh, uh, give a, uh, you know, the last time we did this study, we didn't go into the detail that we get, we're going we're going to go into it right now. And, and this detail is really, we're just going through uh, a couple of pages. And yeah. uh, it's really deep and detailed. Uh, you know, uh, what more or less, what we came about last time that we studied this was uh, that the first half, was really a, uh, a, a judgment towards the Jewish people that were coming into the church, not understanding or not believing who Christ was. And then this, this uh, uh, John, 1 John 1 and 2, which is what we're going to get in today, is, is, is like you're saying, different levels of a believer. Right. And it's amazing. And people, I mean, when, when I heard this, it was amazing to me. And so I think it's going to be amazing to people out there. 
So if you want to start it, uh, my brother, let's go at it. <laughs> <laughs> well said. And, you know, one big difference you're going to notice between Saints Without Walls and uh, God News Network here is you're going to notice on the God News Network, we're going to get a little deeper on a lot of subjects. And we're going to be more controversial. Um, we're going to bring world events into it. We're going to bring news into it and and how God is really – uh, behind everything that exists. And we're going to probably upset some legalists and some teachers out there who are claiming they teach the word of, of God and some who are in the pulpits. And we kind of feel this ministry is going to deal more with that level of understanding and who, and those of you who want to get deeper into the truth behind the truth of things. And sometimes we, um, we're going to have guests on. I'm trying to get one on here right now. It's got a book out that's really cool about the horses. And uh, I won't mention any names yet until I have some uh, confirmation that uh, she wants to come on. But with that said, first, John, let's dive right in. Albert, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions as we go on through here. Now, when you say first, John, and we come in, what's some of the biggest misunderstandings you hear in first, John, as you're teaching it to other leaders around the world? Well, one of the biggest misunderstanding is that uh, they think that First John has to do with uh, uh, with looking at your sins that you commit every day and and uh, and, and uh, praying them out to God, and somehow God is gonna forgive you, which is the first portion of First John, you know, and uh, and and. Uh, they 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 drag that out through the whole deal of First John. They they think that somehow First John has to do with uh, confessing sins and having sins forgiven, and and uh, you know, and uh, if you continue on doing that rotten thing that you do, that you <laughs> that you're not a believer, you know, and and uh, and and they get what happens is that they don't understand what a lot of a lot of first john is talking about so they think it's this and and they kind of shape first john as to their religiousness because that's a that's a religiousness uh until you don't come to the conclusion that jesus christ took away all your sins just like we talked about this morning you're going to try in your christian life to take care of sin somehow and that will be either to act right, do right, or to try to confess sins in order to be forgiven. Well, if you're trying to confess sins in order for you to get forgiveness from God, uh, it sounds very good and it sounds very holy, but really you're you're living in in a uh, in a mistrust of what God has done in the cross, because mm -hmm. when God says something, He really means it. When He says that he came down and died on the cross to do away with sin, that's exactly what he did. He did away with sin in your life. Very well said. I think that's right on target. And I think, you, you know, this morning you were talking about this, and really it's unbelief. You either don't believe what the Father says or you don't understand what the Father says. And if you don't understand what the Father says, that's why we're here. You know, we'll walk you through it gently. Uh, if you don't believe what he says, that's a whole different story. Hmm. And, the, and the reason you don't believe it is because either you don't have the right understanding of what he's saying, or you don't believe it because you're under the law and you can't break free from that. Mm -hmm. You've not been set free from the law. You're still under that condemnation that comes from being under the law. And I got to do, 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 do better, you know? So well said. So first, John, first of all, what I'm going to do is break this down like this. We're going to go a summary, kind of a, I'm going to tell you what we're going to say, then we're going to say it, and then I'm going to tell you what we said, <laughs> okay? What we're going to say is this, first, John really deals with someone who is not a believer in Christ and hasn't confess the original confession, or we're going to deal with those who have confessed that Jesus is the Christ, 
but still want to mix law in with it. Okay, that's the first part of of First John. The second part of First John or chapter two is going to be dealing with infants and little children, boys and girls, who are not understanding really the finality of what Christ did. They're still saved. They're fine. They're still good. They're still going to go to heaven, but they don't. They, they're kind of like a servant. If you're a servant in a master's house or a king's house, you get to live in a house, but really you don't realize you have full reign of the house, of your father's house. You don't realize you have authority in your father's house. You don't realize you're a prince. You're, you're just a little baby or you're a little boy or a little girl thinking, I got to keep the rules. I got to do this right. And then... Chapter 3 is going to be dealing with sons, princes, saints. Because to get to that level of understanding that you're going to find out in chapter 3 is going to blow your mind. Because it's a whole level of understanding that is much deeper than the first two chapters. And as we go along in First John, it gets deeper. It gets a little more complex. It gets a little more difficult to understand. So we're going to break these first three chapters down in, in some uh, awesome complex deals here. So. so, so Rick, it's like so. It's like what you're saying is that uh, it's like uh, you know the understanding of a baby to a teenager to a uh, young adult, and then to finally a father. Right. That's more or less, what we're looking at. Yep, that's well said, sir. Well said. So that which was from the beginning we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. This is one of the keys of First John. If you want to have fellowship with us, are you currently part of us? Mm-hmm. No, you're not part of us. If, if, if I say, um, Albert, I hope that you can have fellowship with, with us. Now, that means your current standing, are you having fellowship with us? No, no fellowship. Right. So the only way you can have fellowship with us is he's right now declaring to you and saying that, let's let's kind of look at this a little deeper. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life that was manifested, the, And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you so that you may also may have fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. So right now they don't have fellowship with us. And 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 uh, this this first uh, portion, Rick, uh, ha- it has to do really with the Jews coming into the church. Uh, if we remember, the Jews did not believe that Jesus Christ was God, and it was very hard for them to accept that because they did not conceive that a holy God could take the form of a sinful man. Right. So. Right. This right here has to deal, it deals with that. It deals with the heart of the unbelieving Jew. An was, unbeliever, period. Yeah, an unbeliever. Yeah, that's correct. It, yeah. An unbeliever, yeah. Yeah, because they currently don't have fellowship with us. And we're, we're sharing with you all this information so that you may have fellowship with us. Right. So you could believe that this person, uh, mainly what is saying this, listen, we, we were firsthand witnesses to this man to jesus christ we felt him you see him we heard him you know we have seen him this are first first hand people that have seen this 
And the reason, the only reason why they're saying all this is because it's all the people that not believe it. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So right now, these people, they're not in, they're not in the camp to fellowship with us. And I'm going to share all this stuff that we have personally bear witness to. And we're going to share all this stuff with you so that we hope that you may have fellowship with us. And then he's going to say, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. So there is the first section. Okay, you outside of our fellowship, we hope that you come into our fellowship. Mm -hmm. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. That's correct. And that's, uh, that's by the way, that's a quotation of the Bible, too, uh, where it says, you know, that if you're in the Father... If you're in the Son, you're also in the Father. If you're not in the Son, you're not in the Father. <laughs> so this right here is very important because at that time, since they didn't believe that the Son was in the Father, they thought that they had fellowship with the Father, and they then they were kidding themselves. Right. And, you know, if, if you're watching this and you're seeing this or you're hearing this for the first time and you hear my voice, you hear passion and pride, you're right, but it's not in me. It's not in my understanding of this information. It's my pride and passion is with him. It's my pride in him and what he's done for me. It's my pride in him, what he's done for my brother Albert. It's We are here ministering something and we're very passionate and and we do have pride in what he's done. I boast in him. I boast in him. Albert boasts in him, not in ourselves or our understanding of this information. Please keep that at your heart. And these things we write to you, why? So that your joy may be full. This is the message which we've heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is is no darkness at all. Hmm. Hmm. So here's the message. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie hmm. and do not practice the truth. Hmm. Let's stop right there, Rick. So God is light, and what he brings is a message of light, which is a true message. Uh, if we look at, you know, uh, the Gospel of John, you know, the, the law came through Moses, but truth came through Jesus Christ. And that's what it's talking about here, that Jesus Christ, he's not just light, but he's bringing the light of the truth. So if you're not in this light of the truth of the gospel, and you don't believe that he is God, then you are in darkness. It's not that you're doing bad things. The bad thing that you're doing is that you're not believing. That is the bad thing that you're doing. So you're in the darkness because you're not in the light of the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Here he was dealing with a group of people that thought that they had no sin, that there was no sin. Do you remember the name of the group of the people there? They were the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were the ones that they thought that they were righteous or self-righteousness. That's what the Bible calls it, self-righteous by their own works. So they were fooling themselves, just like Jesus Christ a couple of times says, do what they say, but don't do what they do. <laughs> yeah. But and really, the uh, sin there is a sin of, of apostasy. Well, and also First John here was written to the Gnostics. Are you familiar with the Gnostics? Uh, give us a little bit of detail in reference to that uh, Rick? All right, let's go into this. This is kind of interesting. 
Gnosticism traces its root back just as after the beginning of the Christian church. Some researchers state that the evidence in existence even predates Christianity, whichever the case. The era of Gnosticism had affected the culture and the church of the time and possibly even earned a mention in 1 John 4. The word Gnosticism comes from the Greek word Gnosis, which means knowledge. Basically, this is a group of people that thought they were given this special knowledge and that now no one was full of sin. No one had sin. There were many groups that were Gnostic, and it isn't possible to easily describe the nuances of each various group. However, generally speaking, Gnosticism taught that salvation is achieved through special knowledge. Not through Christ, but through special knowledge. This knowledge usually dealt with the individual's relationship to the transcendent being, which they're calling God. The, not, the knowable God was, was far too pure and perfect to have anything to do with the material universe, which was considered evil. That's what they thought. Therefore, God generated lesser divinities or emanations. Okay? So... These guys were a little out to lunch, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, we right have here. A, a, yeah, a form, a, a couple of forms from Nazism, we have them today. Uh, one will be, uh, you know, uh, there's different religious groups, and I'm not going to call names, but there's different. Come on, this is God News Network. Yeah, okay. Say, no, well, just... let's go with the Jehovah Witnesses first. Okay. The Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, believe that Jesus Christ was not God. They believe that he was another God, a, a smaller level of God, you see? Right. And, and, and so they keep on going uh, with that. So this is kind of uh, in the realm of that. And again, the thought is that God is so holy that he can never become man, you see? So Jesus Christ cannot be God because he came as a man. So he has to be somebody lesser than God. Uh, also, we have that with the Mormons. The Mormons is also the same thing. Jesus Christ is not God. This is all forms of Gnosticism. So this right here, this letter in the beginning, it's like if you're talking to a group like that. You're talking to somebody or a Jew. Right. A Jewish person who hasn't accepted Christ and says that, Jesus Christ was a prophet, or you could e even go with a Muslim. A Muslim says that Jesus Christ was not God. That Every religion on the earth says that they have to do something yeah. except Christianity. Yeah. And all those, those are, are sorts of Gnosticism because they're, they're, they're not believing that Jesus Christ was God incarnated and man. That, and that's, that's what this is uh, uh, dealing with. Yeah, because God was Jesus. Jesus was God in the flesh, and it says that all over the Bible. But it says, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not us. If we confess those sins or our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So here you go. You say, okay, I don't have any sin. I don't have any sin, but ooh, maybe I do have some sin because I'm realizing I'm a sinner. I confess my sins. He is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, how many times does he have to do this? Is it every time you sin? Yeah. Well, the problem is there, Rick, that uh, that word sins and plural there, and the word in one eight sin, I think they're the same word. I think that they added the S, but in true reality, it's the same word. It's harmatia again, which is to miss the mark. To miss the mark. To miss mistaken, be mistaken, or miss, or wander off the path of uprightness, honor to do or go wrong, to wander from the law of God, to violate God's law, that which is done wrong, sin and offense. It's okay that it's not uh, the sin of unbelief because we're going to get there. Because the way this fits together, it'll eventually land on unbelief. But right now, these two word sins, they do deal with your action of sin. 
You think so, Rick? Okay. Yes, I do. I really do. And we kind of went through this in our study, and you and I kind of came to that same, that same uh, uh, fork in the road right here a little bit because I know that, you know, it will all end up at the sin of unbelief. It will. It will. And, it, you know, you're right that, in fact, it will. But this word is actually missing the mark, which is harmatia. It is truly missing the mark. But when you miss the mark, Rick, and I can see what you're saying, when you miss the mark. He's the mark. He's the mark. Uh, and uh, and that's, uh, that's the, it's not that you're missing the mark of the law. It's that you're missing him. If we confess our sin, everything we've done, or he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse all from righteousness. Let me go there because this is still dealing with people who think they are trying to keep the law. Mm-hmm. That's why this has to be broken down into different groups of people because then the next chapter changes and then it changes at verse eight. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. If we look at that word sin, it deals with harmatino. Harmatino is a verb. This is an action. If we say that we are without the action of sinning, which is exactly what this states, mm-hmm. we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We have to come to the conclusion that we have actions of sin. That's what First John is dealing with. But the good news is, He's talking to unbelievers. How do we know that? We know that because he says right here, because that you also may have fellowship with us. Who's us? We're the believers. He was part of the group of the believers. So right now he's saying, we hope that you join us. Mm -hmm. We hope you have fellowship with us. So that means if they don't at this point, they're unbelievers. Mm -hmm. This is the mistake that most religion preachers make is right here mm-hmm. because they think first John is dealing with the believers, believers. Yeah. and it's not. And it says it right here. We hope that you have fellowship with us, us. We are a group of believers and we hope you come in and have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the father, son, and Jesus Christ. So that means your fellowship is not right. So First John, it's like, it's like uh, you know, because there's places in First John, as we're going to find out, that is, it is dealing with a believer. Uh, First John is like a pastor in a church. You know, when, you sit, when a pastor is teaching in a church, really you have two groups of people in the church. The whole church, what, what we call the whole building, that's not, the, the church is a safe people. But I'm talking about <laughs> the people in the church. That's people in the church. Okay, people in the, the building, people in the church. Yeah, you're gonna. They're gonna. He's gonna find two two different types of people in the church. Ones that are safe, yes. and ones that are not safe. Yes. And uh, and you could you could go to uh, 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 you could see that in today's uh, uh, churches uh, that you know he will sometimes they will have a uh, a sermon and. Uh, and talk to people who, let's say, that are safe, and the sermon might be reverent, reverent to the people who are safe, but then he'll turn around at the end and he'll say, okay, now if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, right? Uh, and then he'll go ahead and, and, and show the people how they could accept the Lord Jesus Christ right? and, and, and come into to the church, the real church, which is the people who are in, in Christ. So That's this right here... It's, it's basically the same thing. Exactly. He's dealing with two groups of people. Yes. And he's telling, except for right here, he's dealing first with the group of people who are not safe. Yes. Praise and, God. And then he's going to turn around. You got it, brother. And he's going to grow, and he's going to talk to the group of people who are safe. And he's going to give them assurance of their salvation and give them assurance as to what they have to learn. Awesome. Great example. That's one of the greatest examples I've ever heard of this. But you're right. It's, you know, how in the building of the church, he ends up dealing with the unbelievers at the end. Mm -hmm. Here, he's dealing with the unbelievers first. So now we know that because of verse three. 
this is key to that whole verse so that you may have fellowship with us. And us, the group of believers that's claiming this, our fellowship is with the Father and Son. So we're hoping you can have fellowship with the Father and with his Son. And, and this right here is clarified by a lot of the, of, the, of the gospel because the gospel says that we all are a body. Yeah. So, you know, you cannot tell, like, kind of like what the Bible says, you cannot tell your finger or your feet or your head, you're not needed because <laughs> everybody is needed and That's everybody right. has fellowship with one another. Yes. So this cannot be dealing with the church because the church has to have fellowship with one another because right. we're bound together. And we're whether bound whether right. it's whether it's the Gnostics, whether it's the Jews, whether it's whatever, the bottom line is they're all categorized in unbelievers in First John one, the first chapter. So let's go on to this, the second chapter. Before we do, I want to read the very bottom one. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. This is key, my little children. Now. These things I'm going to write to you. So he's changing groups right here. Mm -hmm. I'm changing groups. I'm writing now something to my little children. The first one I was writing to those who had no fellowship with us. This one I'm writing to my little children. What kind of children are we dealing with? It's technion. This is really important to understand the original Greek word, because children has so many different meanings in the uh, Greek, and it only gets translated into one word in English language because we didn't make all these little different words for children. We changed it. But this is really important. Let's look. This is a little child. A little child. Okay, darlings. Here it is. An infant. I'll um, say it. I'll say in all languages, Rick. Since I'm, I'm Spanish, I could tell you. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and Italian is bambino, <laughs> and in, in Spanish it's niñito. <laughs> they're talking about a little one, you know. Yeah, Dibers. this is. They're talking about diapers here. <laughs> right, and in this Strong's fifty forty was translated as little children nine times. Nine times. So this is really important to understand that word. So we're going to deal with the little ones, my little ones. These things I write to you so that you may not sin. Now, don't touch that. Don't burn your hand on the stove. Don't do that. And if anyone does, it's okay. We have an advocate. Daddy's going to take care of us. And it's Jesus Christ, the righteous. Wow. Think about that. That is so powerful. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. The whole world. Is he talking about unbelievers there too? Well, let's find out. If he's talking about the sins of the whole world, it's actually where we get our science word, cosmos. There it is. Let's hear what the Strong's Greek word is. Strong's G, 2889, cosmos, cosmos. And if we look in it, it's a harmonious arrangement of constitution, order, or government, ornament, decoration, adornment, the arrangement of the stars, the heavenly host, the world, the universe, the circle of the earth. Okay. He didn't die for the sins of only the believers. Hmm. Uh oh! I just does that. Yeah. Does that that kind of correlates with uh, with the Gospel of John and uh, J what Jesus Christ said in the beginning that He came because of His love for the world, and He died for the whole world. That's what that's what that's what the Gospel of John talks about, doesn't it? Yes. 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 So, I, I love that. That's so well said. Now. Does that mean everybody's going to heaven in all the cosmos or the, or the, or the, the world? No. no. Just because I've made a gift for everybody in my household doesn't mean everybody gets, gets it because they haven't received it yet. Mm -hmm. We'll get to there. Now, by this, we know that we know him if 
we keep his commandments. I know my dad because I get to keep his commandments. Are those commandments, what are they? Actually, they are the law. Because little kids think they got to obey the rules. Little babies think they have to obey the rules. He who says, I know him and does not keep those commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know we are in him if we keep his word. So he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he Walk. So if you think you got to keep these little rules and you got to walk just as Jesus did, brethren, I write no new commandment. This is stuff we've heard from the beginning, keeping his commandments. Let me read it again. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment. He calls them beloved. Those are the little infants. Beloved, okay? You've heard this from the beginning. you got to keep these commandments. That way you know you're with him. And, and if you keep his commandments, you're perfected in him. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Okay, now I'm going to write you something new. A new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him, and because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like anything in the commandments. That sounds like love. Hmm. The only commandment he's saying, he's talking about love. He who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children. uh Uh-oh, there's that word. What is this one? It's the same as the other one. Little ones, little children. There it is. Okay? I write to you, little children, because... Your sins are forgiven. Hmm. For whose name's sake? Not yours. For his name's sake. Okay. I write to you, fathers. What is fathers? If we look here, it is Strong's G 3962. Pater. Pater. This one is male ancestor. You are in the lineage. You are absolutely the nearest ancestor, father of corporeal nature, natural fathers, a more remote ancestor, the founder of a family, a tribe, people, forefather, fathers, ancestors, forefathers, founders, and founders of a, of a nation. One advanced in years. Okay? So a father here he's dealing with is someone who's advanced. Because, why does he write to the fathers? Because you have known him who is from the beginning. You know who your father is. Okay, I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. You don't even get to the young men stage until you've overcome the wicked one. That's why if you think the wicked one has power, then you're still below the young man stage. If you're giving power to the wicked one, you haven't overcome him, you haven't overcome him yet. Mm-hmm. I write to you little children because you have known the father. Now, this is interesting because this word, little children, if we look back, whoops, where we at? I write to you, little children. There it is. I write to you, little children. If we look at this one, it's a whole different word. It's not technon. It's not technion. It's not pater. <laughs> Let's see what it is. It's pideon. Pideon. All right. This is different. It's a young boy or a young girl. But it also says little ones of a male child just recently born, of a more advanced 
child of a mature child. That's what he's dealing with here. He's dealing with of a more advanced child of a mature child. Why? Because they have known the father. That's why you know it's a more mature child. I've written to you, fathers, because you've known him who is from the beginning. I've written to you. Up here it was, I write to you. And down here it's, I have written to you. Interesting change there. Mm. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you've overcome the wicked one. Mm. Do not love the world or the things in the world. So that was a change from I currently write to I have written. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If anyone loves the world, they don't know how much they're loved by the Father because if you realize how much you're loved by the Father, you will no longer live in the world. That no longer matters. You said that earlier to me today, Albert, um, when we were talking before the church service of how you said none of it matters. All this stuff just doesn't matter once you know how much you're loved and how much Jesus mm -hmm. loves me. And, and Yeah. Yeah, the circumstances, nothing really, uh, because you know that whatever circumstance comes in, that that doesn't have to do anything with the love of the Father that he has in you. So, uh, you know, it goes back again to, uh, uh, if we go back in the Bible, there's some uh, aspects that we you could go into the, uh, the four Gospels, that every time, they will come to a certain person that had some kind of sickness or anything. The first thing that the disciples or the people that were there will say, now who sinned? The, the, what did he commit that God came and, and, and set lightning at him or, or, or he has this disease? You see, that's, that's a thinking of a baby. Mm -hmm. But the, And here you go, you know, Christ being mature in his understanding because he is God telling them he's, you guys, he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. There was nothing. There was no sin of him, his sin, or his father's sin, or anybody's sin that caused him to be that way. So yeah. the same thing with us right now. You know, every time something happens in our lives and all that, you know, uh, we could say, well, God, here it goes. God took away my house because probably it was something that I did, you know. Or, or my car or something, you know, that happens in your life. And, and basically, uh, you know, that's, that's basically a, a little child's view of, of, of things, a little child's view of God, you know. Uh, like if God had to take away something to, you know, punish you or something like that, you know, the punishment, the Bible says it very clear that the punishment, punishment for sin is death. And he never dealt anybody through the law. The only person that Jesus Christ or God dealt according to, to the law is himself. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ took the brunt of everybody in the world. The only one that was punished through the law was Christ. Yeah. That's right. Nobody else. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So, all those things, if you know how much you're loved by the Father, you won't want to participate in that. That's why you will not love the world or the things in the world. Because you know the love of the Father is in you. And you won't want to participate in anything that is opposition of the love of the Father. Mm -hmm. And we know that the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. We know the will of God. The will of God. Yeah, the will of God is, is for to save everybody. The will yeah. of God is for us to come to him so he could bring us his perfection. That is the will of God. Little children, it is the last hour. Now we're back to a different little children. He goes back into Pideon or the little boy, little girl, right? Little boy, little girl, it is the last hour. And as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming 
even now many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Hmm. That's a very interesting uh, statement there because uh, the the Bible is full of that. The Bible, uh, you know, I mean, you go to just about <laughs> any book, Rick, and it talks about this people creeping in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> little <laughs> little roaches. <laughs> yeah, that's and, uh, right. And uh, those are people, you know. Again, the same people that have been there for forever. People of the they call it people of the circumcision or people of the law. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's really the same people. And 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 if you're not if you're not solidly if you're not a father. Or if you're not a grown child, you're going to get hurt by these people because these people will come in and they will talk about condemnation. And if you're not solid as to who your identity is and what Christ really came to do, you're going to fall into guilt. And you're going to question a lot of times, you're going to question your identity. Not nice. that your identity will ever change because of your questioning, because your identity is based solely in what Christ did for you and the trust that you have in his trust. So that will never waver, but you're going to be feeling guilty because of these people. And these people are rampant in today's society. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well said, brother, you know, and it is a, an identity thing, and that's what he's dealing with here in 1 John two nineteen, because he said, they went out from us, but they were not of us, so their identity wasn't part of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest or made known that none of them were with us, or of us. But you, but you, you all know, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Wait a minute. I have an anointing from the Holy One, and I know all things? Wow, that is a power. Are you sure you're talking about me? <laughs> I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Mm. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. So this is where all the other religions you were talking about earlier, if they deny him, they deny the father. Mm -hmm. And and don't get it confused. Uh, Rick, there's a lot of people who get it confused that they think that they, their zeal that they have for God, that, that means anything. Well, let me tell you that even the Jews had the zeal for God, but they perished. So don't think that because you hear a lot of these groups having a zeal for God that they're in the truth and that they're part of God because it, does, it says it right here. If you do not believe in Christ, it doesn't matter how much zeal you have for God, you're mistaken. That's right. Yeah. It just, it just matters if you accept the Son or deny the Son. That's really it. He who acknowledges the Son also has the Father. This is a screening question. Because if you haven't been shared the love of Jesus Christ and no one's shared it with you, and you're, let's say you're listening to this and you're a Muslim, you now know that if you have the Son, you have the Father. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. You don't have to go blow yourself up. You don't have to kill yourself. You can accept Jesus and you have eternal life. You can accept his love that he has for you. He put all the punishment on the son, not you. Mm -hmm. 
He put all the punishment on his son. That is an amazing thing that he did for you. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. Let it remain there. Let it stay there. Let it take residence there. Let it never leave you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him. That when he appears, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before his coming. There's only one way you can be ashamed if you're not abiding in him. And you're trying to abide in your efforts under the law. That's the only way you can be ashamed. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And how do we practice righteousness? By believing. There's where we get to the believing. How do we know that? Romans 3, chapter, or Romans chapter 3, verse 21 and 22 tells you that it was his faith that did it for you. All you have to do is believe. And Romans uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 9 and 10 says the same thing. Can't hear you, Albert. You must have your mic off. Sorry. That anointing that that is talking about in uh, 227 is really really an identity. What he's uh, basically saying that that you have his identity. That's what he's basically saying. So... uh, if you know that you have his identity, you've been anointed, you know, like, for instance, uh, another place where you could find anointing is in a king. When a king has been anointed, that he's been put in a position, and that position is his. Yes. So, so uh, these people who are creeping in the churches, what well, they're actually coming back is they're going with what the devil said to Adam and Eve. That the God really say this is the people who you are. That's where the devil fights you. That's where the devil tries to get people down by a position and by you disbelieving God. Did God really say this about you? You know, when God says uh, that you're holy, that you have no sin, what the devil gets to you and, and these people, they work in the same way. They, they work with the same principle of the devil, and that is with the law. The devil will tell you, well, how can you believe that you are holy when look at the things that you have done in your life? You see, the law works. And these people will do the same thing. These people will tell you, the first thing that they'll tell you is, stop sinning, look at what you're doing. Uh, You know, I didn't want to get into this, but let's get into it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, the, 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 the uh, Bible says not to judge anybody, whether they're safe or whether they're not safe, by the works of their flesh. Okay? That's uh-huh. what the Bible says. Now, let, let's look at people here, and it's very interesting. Regardless whether Donald Trump is safe or not, okay, what, you know, regardless whether he knows the Bible or not, let's see who really doesn't know the Bible. Because if the Pope was doing a judgment <laughs> on Donald Trump, oh. and Donald Trump, because of the works that he has seen, uh, well, you know, that reminds me of, of what, what the scriptures say about Christ says. He says that... Uh, you know, to, about your brother, about a straw in your brother's eyes, and you might have a log in your eyes. Uh, let's analyze things like this. That's funny because, the you know, you're so right. When that happened, Bob and I uh, called each other, and we were like, the Pope is wrong. 
Yes. He think is. about that. That's very controversial. But I want to tell you right now, he was so wrong. He was According wrong. According to the Bible, he was wrong. Yes. And not just in the Bible, but he really, he really doesn't have a leg to stand on because if that's the way that he's judging Donald Trump, and, and, and it's not, it doesn't have to do it with anybody. If that's the way he judges other people, he is blinded because let's, let's face the facts, okay? He talks <laughs> about Donald Trump. He talks about Donald Trump building a wall. Do you know that one of the most fortified cities in the world is the Vatican? It's the right, exactly. And, and not just that. They built a wall, not only physically, but they made themselves their own country so they could have their own laws and keep everybody else out of it. That's right. There's only a That's certain right. group of people who could enter the Vatican. You don't see Muslims inside the Vatican unless they're only visiting for a day, you know? And not they can check very well. In. It's exactly right, Albert. Now, talking about, talking about you know, leaders... <laughs> Not being safe. Do you know that, you know, he's talking about him being unsafe because of his works. Well, what about, what about the leaders in the Vatican who has been caught pedophiling pe uh, kids? Mm. What about yeah. those leaders? Do we make a, a determination whether they're safe or not because they've been pedophiles? Or, or what about the Inquisition? I mean, you know what that reminds me of in Revelation, what you're talking about there? I hate to say this. You know what? This is very controversial. It's about as controversial as what you're talking about, but I'm going to say it anyway. <sighs> the whore that rides upon the beast. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the colors, I mean, nobody's saying this, but let's say it. Dude, that was so wrong what he did it, on so many levels. It was absolutely unbelievable. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's a bad theology that they uh, have. They don't. They're looking at other people and not even understanding the the things that they do themselves. So so they're they're claiming that other people are not uh, safe because of their actions, and they themselves do not use that same term with themselves because mm -hmm. if they were using it themselves, they will find out that they're even worse off than Donald Trump or, or anybody, you know? And that just doesn't stop in the Catholic Church. We have people here that were laughing at, at Donald Trump because he, did, he misquoted Bible verses, you know? Like if, like, if, <laughs> like if most of those people were quoting every time 100% the right Bible verses and saying the right things. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. We have to stop talking about people if they're whether they're safe or not by the works of their flesh brother we opened up a can of worms in so many ways on this show but you know what that's what this show is all about you know the anointing it's trisma it's smeared on and if we look at that word and we look at what it says but the anointing it was smeared on you received how is it smeared on by Christ and you accepted him and you abide in him. That's how it was smeared on. That's how it was applied to you. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And you practice righteousness by believing. We don't have time to get into the third chapter, and we'll do that next Sunday. But the third chapter is getting into those who are sons. And you want to talk about controversial. Wait till you hear the next chapter. <laughs> Brother Albert, great, 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 great. It's always great to be with you and talk about God, talk about Christ, talk about the Pope, talk about <laughs> what he did to Trump. All those beautiful things here on God News Network. Most of all, everything points to you. All about you. So... Keep Jesus at the center of your world. And give him all honor, all glory, and all praise. And when we do that, you have nothing to worry about, and you are living the abundant life. And we want to thank you for tuning in to God News Network. That's GodNewsNetwork.com. GodNewsNetwork.com, or you can go to Facebook. 
and go to facebook.com forward slash GNN radio. You can also go to Twitter at God News Network. You can also go to youtube.com forward slash God News Network. Also, join us on Sundays at saintswithoutwalls.com. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, all of you meet in your house and stream the most awesome information service you will ever hear. And you can do it right from the comfort of your own home in your Thanks for joining us here at God News Network, and we hope that you have a beautiful and blessed day.